Welcome to Te Waka Pambili, the building of a Warham Tiki 38 catamaran. In this video, we finally make a start on those hulls. During the course of the winter, we planned out exactly what we'd needed and how we'd proceed. Lofting out the lower bulkheads became a thing. So after heaps of very careful measuring, cross-referencing points, double-checking for symmetry, we could eventually get into a bit of production. We produced uh, blow bulkheads for both the starboard and port hulls at the same time. Okay. The groove cut to length. Seems to work pretty well. Put the side up. And the other bit that fits in. Which is the, the, what do they call it, the backbone? The backbone. Goes in there. Yes, yes. So these are the bulkheads, we just cut and shaped them. And we thought we'd just lay them out at their uh, station spacings just to get a rough idea. They do change in height, but it gives us um, a kind of a feel for what the shape of the lower hull would look like. There you have it, nice sunny day to be out here doing this. I've got, got a jig going here now to cut out these little spaces on the bulkheads where the, what goes in there? Stringers. The stringers, I was going to say that. So you've got one of those follow uh, trim router bits in the router. And it'll follow the profile that's just below here. about ready I think. This little bearing follows the template at the bottom of that hole. And then we're able to simulate the stringer, which is 19 by 45, and that goes in there so it's absolutely flush on the other side there and there. So that's working quite nicely, leaving a little bit of wriggle room for glue. We added a pair of legs and a few 45 by 19s to each lower bulkhead. Kaz will pick up a story from here. Those are the bulkheads that we finished a wee while ago, and now we have cut lofted and cut the first part of the backbone and you can see that it slots into the bottom of the lower bulkhead at the bottom with the little slotty things that have been cut out and so proudly we can say we are now putting the hull together. The bulkheads were set up as accurately as possible along our level floor following the centre line, awaiting the backbone. So the thing I've called a backbone all along starts off at the back here with the skeg and bulkhead number seven and we go all the way down. So we're looking at the bottom of the boat with the, so once this is all finished we'll be turning this over. So it will make more sense so when you're seeing it just remember you're looking at the bottom of the boat and down it comes and there we go to the end so dry fitted still got all the little bits and pieces to add to it but that's the, the skeleton of the bottom of the hull. Cool. We removed the bulkheads and used the space to actually assemble the backbone which we would suspend from the roof above and lower into the bulkheads once we'd reset them in their place. Right, we've definitely got a noteworthy moment right on our mark over here. We have now 
put the backbone into each of the bulkheads as a dry fit and you can see this is what the boat will look like upside down woohoo we mocked up the stringers with a few offcuts just to get a sense of the shape so the stringers for the side of the lower hull have now been cut and we've gone to cut the scarves so that we can make the joins and you can see along the way where the clamps are that there is a like a splint that's making sure that the scarves stay all square and in place we can store them until all the sanding and the final prep's been done on the bulkheads and the keel and skeg and then we can start putting those in so yep slowly slowly catch a monkey we're getting there the building's instruction book that suggests that now would be a good time to fair in the foil shape on the uh, trailing edge of the uh, keel and on the leading edge of the skeg so i unashamedly traced these directly off um, my laptop uh, screen um, and yeah we settled for the naca 16 i think it was uh, foil shape which seemed to be a do it all fix it option if we have at the back of the keel here um, a very boxy look and that now needs to be fared so that it has a good rounded shape obviously for our aerodynamic stuff what i've done is i've traced off the leading edge and the trailing edge of the naca 0016 uh, foils uh, that gives me a, um, a shape that i can actually put on the side and compare it to both here and also at the back on the leading edge of the skeg. Yeah, so I've left, left a bit of a flat at the top. The idea is that we're going to have a, a worm shoe at the top that'll also be shaped off um, as well. But I want to be able to put a fillet inside that. Um, and then there's a fillet which comes off this side um, onto the hull side. So that's quite a large radius. So I need to leave a little bit of meat for that there. So I'm really um, carving out the space between this line here and that line up there to create the shape of that uh, foil. So that all happens between these two lines and it's forward most extent is, is about there. So yeah, we'll see how it goes and from time to time as we go. So I'll just check to see that we are matching that foil. We've got a flat edge just there. So I need to reference that just forward of that line and make sure that this comes up onto the center line at the back of the of the trailing edge. And uh, yeah, that should match or as, be as close enough approximation as possible in order to get that foil. Tools are down, the sandpaper's been used, and the surface has now been cleaned, and the acetone just shows how the layers of the laminate have been worn away, and these beautiful lines start to show. Sadly, all of this kind of stuff gets hidden once we start painting. So here's that leading edge. We seem to manage to get the uh, profile sorted out okay. Got a little bit of a dip on the other side, which I'll fill easily enough. You can feel it, but barely see it. So yeah, it seems to be a fairly straightforward process. And of course, the uh, the laminates are a dead giveaway. Make great lines for I'm giving you the profile. Grant's been working on the stringers, and the important thing that has to happen with these stringers is to make sure that they are fair and that the curves are even all the way down. So he has had to fiddle and fit all sorts of bits of wood in just to brace things and keep them in the right place. And at the moment he's now putting in the 
cross members that go underneath that form the supports for the floor in this section, these two sections here of the of the hull. So all these bits of clamps and things are holding things in place and so those are going to be dry fitted now and then we'll glue them and let them sit overnight. All the strings are in and ready to come out, be glassed and then fit it properly. And here we've been fiddling with the sheets onto those stringers and uh, yeah, definitely getting a, a bit of an idea of the shape of, of where we're going. The two sheets at either stem and stern end are butt joined end to end. Mm -hmm. This can be done on the workbench and then offered up to the framework. We use a Payson butt joint to do this. Um, we've used this before in the part and find it to be remarkably strong for what it is. So yeah, more on this to come. The little bits of blue tape that you see cover the screw heads from uh, getting jammed up with epoxy or glue. Those screws are actually holding splints of scrap on the inside just to keep everything squared up and straight. This 200mm wide plastic drywalling knife or scraper is ideal for this job as it covers the full width of this joint. We thickened up some epoxy with a bit of 404 and worked that carefully into any gaps that may have popped up between the edge of the plywood and the margins of the fiberglass. It's important that we got an absolutely solid join. Right, so we're going to have a quick chat about the Payson butt joint that we've uh, employed in Pambili. So the basis of the joint is this double bias cloth. It is a 430 225 uh, double bias, uh, meaning that on the front we've got 430 grams per uh, square meter. Um, you'll see they run in diagonals and then stitched all together and that also holds on 225 grams of chop strand across the back of it. Uh, so I've put that down so the chop strand goes down downward in the join. And then on top of that, we run another 200 grams per square meter of woven cloth. You'll see an example of the joint just here. Right, so this shows you the inside of the joint. We've got a 75 millimeter cutout on either side of the joint itself, giving us a total of 150 mils or close to six inches. The way we've laid that out looks like this. So we've got our nine millimeter ply which we've cut out um, on either side. What I did do at some point was lay up a bit of the double bias on its own on a smooth surface and put in three layers into that. And this is roughly the measurements that I pick up on average of each of those layers. So that's one layer, two layers and three layers. And it gives you a rough idea of the thicknesses of the double bias once it is set up. So that's just hand laminated um, brushed in and stippled with a brush um, and not actually done any more than that. Right, so back to our layup that we've used here. The nine millimeters cut back um, by about one and a half millimeters deep. 
and that's the first cut that gets made on either side there um, into the um, nine millimeter work we sand it down to its final depth which is probably just fractionally over that millimeter and a half and then the red that you see there is that first layer of um, double bias that goes in obviously the yellow on the inside there is the um, thickened epoxy that makes up the glue um, usually that would be 404 to make a strong joint part of the rest system that 404 is and um, we use that elsewhere as well and obviously that's all wet out before we start applying the joint you don't want the plywood sucking all of the resin out of your thickened epoxy or out of your glass so the red is the the double bias that goes in one layer in this instance on either side there's another layer of the 200 gram cloth that goes in on top of that and that is all smoothed out you'll see um, we've scraped that over with a um, drywalling knife or scraper and so we've scraped it out smoothed it absolutely as smooth as we can got all the bubbles out we've also um, used one of these bubble buster rollers for um, getting any of the bubbles out of that surface and on the outside there is the one layer of 200 cloth that fills that up. Again, you'll see that we've um, used thickened epoxy to make sure that any little gaps between the edges of the glass and the step edge of the plywood are absolutely bonded and sealed up. The same both sides, obviously. And then ultimately, once uh, that's all set up and assembled on the outside edge, um, it's all sanded absolutely smooth. We use a bell sander to get that absolutely smooth. And then there are two layers of 200 glass on the outside of the hull. On the inside of the hull, there's just a single layer of the, the 200 uh, woven cloth on the inside. So this is what the joint actually looks like from the inside. You can see where the butt joint is in there. And of course, once you've put on your barrier coat, um, after having sanded up the layer of glass that goes completely across, everything goes completely transparent or very close to. Um, so you can barely see that there's a join there. I'll show you what it looks like from the outside. Right, this is the same join from the outside, obviously the 150 again. The only difference here is that there are now two layers of the E cloth on top going all the way across and um, which leaves you three layers on the actual join of the 200 gram um, woven cloth the e-glass and then one layer below that of the double bias the reason this looks dull is that it had peel ply across here um yeah that's that's an argument for another day altogether and it looks as though i may be removing all of that and um you're washing it off and and grinding that out all together. So yeah, that's the story of our patient's butt joint. There is more information on that online. Um, I'm more than happy with the strength that I get out of that joint. Um, quite sure that it's a better option. Um, you'll see if we look further down that we're able to get that absolutely fair and smooth. There's no hint when you look along that surface, if there's any join there whatsoever. So I'm more than happy with that. We've been having fun and games here, trying to draw the templates for the floors. So we've got some card underneath that we've clamped into place and we've drawn around all the bits and pieces we've had to cut a big hole in the middle because we've got a support strut underneath so that's caused a bit of floppiness but we've managed to cope with that and there we have it so that's the floor of the of the galley we braced up the stringers in, the spaces um, more or less halfway in the saloon and the galley 
with uh, what amounts to a temporary bulkhead. They're just wired in with copper wire and we'll cut those out and remove them later. Right, we're setting up here just so that we can put in our first sheet. Um, it's our side panels or the whole sides that are going on. Um, so yeah, we'll put it onto a uh, time lapse and see how that goes. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I know it's been a while, but uh, please remember to like and subscribe and share and all that fancy stuff and drop us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. See ya.